Greetings. This is Dr. Sandra Cabot talking to you today about fatty liver and how you can reverse it. In the 1980s, I noticed in my patients that the incidence of fatty liver was increasing and by the mid-1990s it had become more prevalent. Medical journals started to write more articles about fatty liver, calling it a new epidemic. Today, fatty liver has become the most common liver disease in the world and affects around one-third of people, or in other words, one in every three people have a fatty liver. What is a fatty liver? Well, put simply, it's the build-up of excess fat inside and in between the liver cells. Fatty liver is also known as hepatic steatosis. Now it's normal for the liver to contain some fat, but if fat accounts for more than 10% of the liver's weight, then you have a fatty liver. In fatty liver, the fat called triglycerides accumulates inside the liver cells as fatty droplets. Something to note is that very little fat is normally stored in the liver. So this is not an ideal situation. There are different types of fatty liver. First of all, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, abbreviated to NAFLD, occurs in people who do not drink excess amounts of alcohol and is most often caused by a diet too high in carbohydrates and processed foods. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease can worsen if it is not addressed. Fatty liver can affect children and is common in obese children. Fatty liver may not cause significant liver damage and if it is only mild in degree, then you may not even be aware you have a fatty liver. Another type of fatty liver is non-alcoholic steatosis, also abbreviated to NASH, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis or NASH. Now in people with the type of fatty liver disease called NASH, the excess fat in the liver leads to damaging inflammation of the liver called non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, such big words. So it's not related to alcohol but nevertheless, we have a lot of liver inflammation. Now, steatohepatitis does cause liver damage, which can become severe. Indeed, it can lead to cirrhosis and liver cancer and is a leading cause of cirrhosis and liver transplant worldwide. The inflammation kills liver cells which become replaced with scar tissue and this process is called fibrosis. This is not good as fibrosis is the biggest predictor that NASH, in other words non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, will lead to severe liver disease. So fibrosis is not something you want to have. There are four stages of liver fibrosis classified from F1 to F4, with F4 being classified as advanced cirrhosis. We can diagnose fibrosis by a liver biopsy or a special ultrasound scan of the liver called a fibro scan. Now another type of fatty liver disease is called alcoholic steatohepatitis and this is where the liver inflammation and fatty liver is linked to alcohol abuse. So we call it alcoholic steatohepatitis. The word hepatitis just means liver inflammation and steato means fat. Now alcoholic steatohepatitis or alcoholic fatty liver, same thing, can lead to cirrhosis of the liver and liver failure. Now, how can you suspect that you could have a fatty liver? Well, 
Signs could be that you're overweight, especially in the abdominal area. We call this central obesity. You may really struggle to lose weight from your abdomen. You may have elevated liver enzymes and or elevated ferritin, which is iron, levels on a blood test. You may have high fasting cholesterol and triglyceride levels on a blood test. You may have elevated fasting insulin levels in a blood test. This is known as insulin resistance. You may be an overweight type 2 diabetic and have trouble controlling your diabetes. You may take a long time, abnormally long time to recover from an illness or an infection and you may be very tired. So a lot of different symptoms there. Now fatty liver can adversely impact your immune system, which is not surprising because it causes increased inflammation in the whole body. This means your immune system will struggle to overcome infections, both acute and chronic infections. Studies have shown that COVID-19 disease is more severe in people with a fatty liver and that it takes longer to fully recover from. Now, no matter what type of fatty liver you have, many studies have shown that fatty liver can be reversed. Let's look at some of the causes of fatty liver. Incorrect diet, usually ingesting excessive amounts of carbohydrates and processed foods high in polyunsaturated processed vegetable oils, Excessive body weight, although fatty liver can occur in slim people who have a very poor diet. Type 2 diabetes increases your risk of fatty liver. Malnutrition, causing deficiencies in protein and vitamins. Exposure to very toxic substances. Excessive alcohol intake. Some medications can cause fatty liver if they are taken for a long time including some painkillers, corticosteroids, antipsychotic medications, statins which lower cholesterol, and tamoxifen. Fatty liver is also more common in polycystic ovarian syndrome in women and low thyroid conditions and unhealthy gut bacteria, which is called dysbiosis, and sleep apnea. And these things need to be treated to improve fatty liver. Let's look a little bit more deeply at the cause of fatty liver. The most common cause really is insulin resistance and this can lead to diabetes type 2 and can cause fatty liver. In insulin resistance the insulin levels are too high because the insulin does not work efficiently and does not allow the body to burn carbohydrate for energy. Instead, carbohydrate gets turned into fat. Indeed, insulin is a fat-storing hormone. Insulin resistance is also known by the names of metabolic associated fatty liver disease, syndrome X, or metabolic syndrome. So they're all the same thing. Metabolic associated fatty liver disease is really a problem with how the metabolism handles dietary carbohydrates. This can be serious because many patients with metabolic associated fatty liver disease develop cardiovascular disease or cancer, but they can also develop severe liver disease. It's interesting that there is no approved medication treatment for metabolic associated fatty liver disease and nutritional medicine and lifestyle modification has been proven to work well. A study of 293 patients showed an improvement in liver fibrosis in 90% of patients who achieved a modest weight loss of more than 10%. It is also important to avoid medications that can cause fatty liver such as corticosteroids, valproic acid, methotrexate and amiodarone. And you can see the reference for that study here. Now, 
When abnormal liver function tests are discovered, it is important to exclude other types and causes of liver disease. Fatty liver is often overlooked. Many people have a liver which is too fatty or overburdened by toxic chemicals. But what I see all the time is that they don't realise this is the reason their health is down and they are not getting better. Some doctors underestimate the liver's role in the failure to recover from illness or achieve good health. Doctors are trained to treat liver disease, but often by then it's too late. It is not safe to just monitor the progress of an unhealthy liver when there are safe, reliable ways to reverse liver inflammation. Recently, I saw a middle-aged man who was struggling to get over long COVID because it had given him blood clots. I explained to him that because he had a fatty liver, he would not achieve his pre-COVID health status. However, he could reverse his problem by improving his liver by quitting sugar, eating more vegetables and good quality protein, and drinking more water and freshly made juices from lime, lemon and grapefruit. He would also need to take Livertone Plus, which is the world-leading and clinically tested formula. How is fatty liver disease diagnosed? Well, fatty liver often has no symptoms or only vague symptoms, so your doctor may be the first one to spot it. Higher levels of liver enzymes or elevated serum ferritin, which is iron levels, that turn up on a blood test for other conditions or on a routine annual blood test should raise a red flag for fatty liver. Elevated liver enzymes and or ferritin are a sign your liver is injured. And remember, excessive fat in the liver can injure your liver. Now to confirm a diagnosis of fatty liver, your doctor may order the following tests. Test to image the shape, size and texture of your liver, such as an ultrasound scan or computed tomography, which is a CT scan of the abdomen. Or the doctor may prefer to do a liver biopsy to determine how far the liver disease has progressed. Or even better, a fibro scan, which is a specialised ultrasound scan, sometimes used instead of a liver biopsy, to find out the amount of scar tissue in your liver. So it's picking up fibrous tissue, which is scar tissue, and it makes the liver hard, so the liver is no longer flexible. So fibrosis in the liver can be detected by the fibro scan and is classified as stage F1 to F4, with F4 being more severe cirrhosis. This is important to detect because the severity of fibrosis is a predictor of more severe liver disease. So you, the more fibrosis you've got, the higher risk of getting severe liver disease from fatty liver. A fibro scan is a great test. It's a non-invasive test and is safer than a liver biopsy. Now, long-term follow-up of fatty liver is important because the progression of fatty liver can vary. But in patients who develop fibrosis, regular monitoring is essential to avoid liver cancer and cirrhosis. Ideally, the liver should be checked annually if you have a fatty liver. We want to see it get better. But in patients with stage 2 cirrhosis, pre-cirrhosis or cirrhosis, it's good to see a liver specialist and have it checked more frequently, say every six months, to look out for liver cancer. So to do this, you'll need a liver ultrasound and blood test for the cancer marker known as alpha-fetoprotein. 
Now remember, early to medium stages of cirrhosis can be reversed with nutritional medicine. So let's talk about how we can reverse a fatty liver. It's good to know if you focus on improving your liver health, you will see enormous benefits within a few months. The liver responds beautifully to some tender loving care. This is not surprising because your liver is the most strategic organ for overall health in your body. Take a look at the diagram. At the centre is the liver and the arrow shows some of the things that the liver is designed to do. Incredible that the largest organ in our body does all this and more 24 hours, 7 days a week to sustain our life. Many studies have shown that fatty liver disease can be reversed with nutritional medicine and the earlier the better. I've written a book titled Fatty Liver, You Can Reverse It and you can also see a testimonial of Dr Thomas Ianelli who had a severe fatty liver and reversed it through nutritional medicine. We also have a clinical study on reversing fatty liver which you can see at liverdoctor.com. So let's have a look at a good way of eating, like a general dietary plan that could reverse a fatty liver. Now, if you have a fatty liver, and particularly if you're overweight and you haven't been eating well, the best eating plan is a low-carbohydrate plan. This can be followed for 4 to 12 months, depending on the severity of your fatty liver. However, it is advisable to avoid a high intake of carbohydrates long term or fatty liver may recur. It's interesting to know that fatty liver is not caused by the consumption of excess healthy unprocessed fat. Say that again. Fatty liver is not caused by the consumption of excess healthy unprocessed fatty foods. It is caused by the consumption of excess carbohydrates and processed foods. Many people think, oh, fatty liver comes up been eating too much fat. No, it's generally too much carbohydrate and the insulin resistance turns the carbohydrate into fat in your liver. So what should we avoid? Well, high carbohydrate foods because they will get turned into fat in the liver. Now grains are high in carbohydrates, so wheat, rye, barley, oats, rice, corn, and things that are made from these ingredients. So you want to exclude pastry, flour, bread, biscuits, muffins, cereals, cakes, biscuits, cookies, pasta, noodles, etc. made from these things. Avoid honey, sugar, jam, sweet preserves and sauces. Salad dressings containing sugar, ice cream and sweet desserts, deep fried foods. However, stir fried is okay if you use healthy oils. Avoid wine, beer, sweet drinks, sodas and fruit juices. Fruit juices are very high in sugar. Margarine, which is processed and contains uh, polyunsaturated vegetable oils. And avoid processed foods containing trans, fatty acids and polyunsaturated vegetable oils. Now what are the good foods you should be eating if you have a fatty liver? Well, spreads that you can use include tahini, hummus, avocado, tomato paste, nut spreads, salted or unsalted butter. And if you want to put on that, and if you want to put those spreads on bread, it has to be nut and seed bread. It has to be no flour, no grains in the bread. And you can find recipes for nut and seed bread uh, on the internet and you can also buy it. So bread, which is made from nut and seeds only, um, is harder than bread containing flour from grains. Um, and um, it tastes quite nice. It's crunchy. So you can have those spreads on that nut and seed bread or on vegetable sticks. Um, you can have that on um, any foods, really, whatever you enjoy. 
Now, healthy salad dressings made from apple cider vinegar, lemon, lime and cold-pressed oils are good. You can have fresh meat of all types. Well cooked is best. But avoid smoked or preserved meats. You can have eggs, free-range or organic is best. You can have organic free-range poultry. I mean, if it's too expensive, um, you can have regular chicken. Um, but, uh, you know, ideally, uh, free-range is good. You can have seafood, including canned. Any vegetables, even the starchy ones, but don't have too many potatoes. Uh, fruits. Now, three pieces daily is a maximum, particularly if you're not doing much exercise. And it's best to avoid bananas or grapes. Too high in sugar. You can have small amounts of legumes, which includes beans, lentils and chickpeas. And you can have raw nuts and seeds. And they can be roasted, raw or salted or unsalted. And they are excellent. You can have yogurt, which has to be plain, unflavoured and full fat is best because it's not processed. And you can have cheese such as feta, pecorino, vintage, parmesan, cottage, ricotta. But avoid the processed sliced cheeses which often have artificial colouring. What are some other good foods for fatty liver? Raw vegetable juices are good. You don't have to have raw vegetable juices and you don't need large amounts. Um, you know, just half a glass two or three times a week is good. Um, things like cabbage, carrot, beetroot, turmeric root, spinach, tomato, ginger root, very good, reduce inflammation in the liver. You can have coconut milk or coconut cream, which can be diluted with water and makes a nice milk. You can have unsweetened almond milk. You can have coconut oil, cold-pressed oil, such as olive oil. You can have Sindex slimming protein powders excellent for smoothies made with coconut cream and water and berries syndex protein powder is all natural extremely low in carbs high in protein and reduces hunger you can also make yourself a grain free muesli and it's nice with coconut milk or coconut cream diluted with water or almond milk so you can see a recipe here whey protein powder or syndex protein powder, ground linseed, sunflower seeds and almonds, we abbreviate to LSA, pumpkin seeds, a few cashew nuts or other nuts you like, and chia seeds. It makes a nice grain-free muesli. You could have some full-fat plain yogurt on that or some coconut milk and some berries. So it makes a nice breakfast for a change. Now, alcohol. We should really avoid wine as it's high in carbohydrates. Many beers are high in carbohydrates, but low-carb varieties are available. A lower-carb, better alternative is dry spirits, but only in small doses occasionally. So spirits such as rum, whiskey, vodka, tequila, with soda water, fresh lime and lemon, and stevia or nature sweet sugar substitute. If you do have a problem with alcohol and you find you're drinking too much, it's best to avoid it all altogether. You can make a nice drink, drink mix um, by adding a little bit of ginger root, pass a small amount through the juice extractor, add it to the soda water, stevia lime or lemon. So that doesn't sound too hard. And the good thing is once you're eating less carbohydrate and eating more protein and more healthy fat, you won't be hungry, you'll be satisfied and you'll start to lose weight and your liver will be most appreciative because it will start to heal itself. Very important to reverse a fatty liver because as you've seen it can be associated with liver disease, liver cancer, cirrhosis. A healthy liver gives you a much better chance of good health and longevity. Just take the letter R off the end of the word liver. It says live. Yes, love your liver and live longer. For more information, see our series of liver videos. You may send us an email if you have further questions or visit liverdoctor.com. And thanks for listening.